Welcome, everybody. Uh, thank you very much for the invitation. So we just heard the title. Um, I will talk about the uh, action of the diffeomorphism group of a manifold in the space of matrix of positive scalar curvature. Uh, so let me begin by, by fixing some notations. So we talk about compact manifolds with boundary often. Um, if we have on the boundary a fixed metric of positive scalar curvature, I call the curly R plus MG. This is a space of Riemannian of PSC matrix, which near the boundary have like a collar form, the form G plus DT squared. And if M is closed, I just omit the subscript G. So that's my notation for the space of metrics of positive scalar curvature. And then we have the diffeomorphism group of M, the group of all diffeomorphisms, uh, denoted diff M and denoted diff delta n, by that I mean uh, those diffeomorphisms which are the identity at the boundary and a little bit over the boundary. Um, so you have an action that's very, very obvious. The diffeomorphism group acts on the space of positive scalar curvature matrix by pullback. And um, from this action, you get, yeah, you get two things. You could say, okay, I look at the space of, so each, each diffeomorphism F gives you a pullback map F star. And uh, let me denote by H odd of R plus MG. Johanna, uh, we don't see a slide. You don't so, see the slides? Yeah. I, I see the slide. Oh, you see the slides. Okay, so then my, it's my problem. Uh, that's what... Maybe, is it a prop? Okay, sorry. I yeah. see it. So, Maybe uh, you need to pin it. So this, can you see that? Yes. Yes. Good. Yeah, so some these are not for me, but well, let me figure out this. Yeah. Okay. So H odd of the space X, that's the space of uh, homotopy equivalence from X to X. Uh, that's not a topological group. It's something a little weaker. It's a topological monoid. Um, so you have this map sigma coming from diffeomorphisms going to the homotopy automorphisms. And also you could look at a, a metric H in R plus M and look at the orbit map from the diffeomorphism group to this space of metrics. So that's matter of notation. And um, so that's, of course, we, we, have, we have heard it in, in Bernard's talk. Uh, one idea, so you, you, you people asked, does this space R plus M have non-trivial topology? And one idea, of course, could be you, you take an element in the homotopy group of diff M and let it act. So look at the action map and you get a different and uh, get an element in the homotopy groups of the space of PSC matrix. And then you ask, is this non-trivial? So there we know we have, if, if M is spin, we have all these tools from index theory, this index difference map, and you could ask, do you get a non-trivial element here? So that was an idea by Nigel Hitchin very long ago. And he proved some results for spheres and then later other people proved, proved results with that. And uh, but it has been difficult. Yeah, so you, 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 you learned in Bernard's talk you know, together with Schick and, and Steimler. That's exact, they did exactly that. Yeah, they, they constructed for certain manifolds, constructed such uh, elements in the homotopy of diff M and, and proved that it by index theoretic means that the uh, resulting homotopy class in R plus M is non -trip. Um I want to talk about the phenomenon that's slightly strange. The phenomenon is uh, that this action map is often fairly close to a trivial map. Uh, so this this explains why it was so why it was so difficult to to implement this this strategy. It's because very often, and it, it, sometimes it's even a theorem, that, that sometimes this action map is actually the trivial map. So that's an insight that we had. And this is what I call a rigidity phenomenon. And I want to uh, start with some examples of this rigidity phenomenon. And they all come, they all come from the surgery theorem. And the first example is what's also already mentioned by uh, Bernard. So you, you are, okay, let's try to implement the strategy. What's the first manifold you can think about? You, you think about the disk, yeah? Then an odd dimensional disk, there we have a classical theorem 
that calculates the homotopy groups of the uh, diffeomorphism group of a disk in low degrees. And the answer is slightly surprising. You get in every fourth degree, you get, you get a copy of Q, if you tensor with Q. And for an even dimensional disk, you get actually zero. So that's a very classical result by Farrell Xiang. It's, it's almost 50 years old. And uh, then uh, Bernard, together with uh, Boris and Thomas Schick and Mark Walsh, they asked, uh, yeah, well, do you get non-trivial elements in the homotopy of the space of PSC metrics on a disk? Where here, I mean, I mean, those PSC metrics which near the boundary are just the wrong metric. And what they proved is, uh, well, this map is rationally zero. That's bad news in a sense. Yeah, so you don't get for a disk. For a disk, you can't see that the space R plus is, um, is, is, not, is not contractible. Um, so that was the, maybe that's the first instance of this, of this phenomenon. Um, so there's a, a second thing. Um, so we, we, let me talk about spin manifolds and it, it turns out, it turns out that the theorems are not about the group, uh, the action of the diffeomorphism group, but about the action of what is known as a spin diffeomorphism group. So the spin diffeomorphism group, it's not only those diffeomorphisms which preserve the spin structure, that would be a finite index subgroup of the diffeomorphism group. Instead, you have an extension of this by Z mod two. It's because a spin structure has an automorphism of order two, the so-called spin flip. So it's not quite a subgroup, but it's very close to it. And this is a group we, we will be talking about. So what we discovered some years ago is the following phenomenon. If you, if you take a spin manifold of dimension at least six, which is simply connected and spin null bordered, and then you have the following result. You take two spin diffeomorphisms of that manifold. You look at the pullback maps on R plus M, and we found out that these pullback maps commute up to homotopy. Uh, so why is this remarkable? It's remarkable by a slight reformulation. We see, we see why it's remarkable. So the, the, um, this action map, it starts from the, from pi zero of uh, the spin diffeomorphism group, that's so-called spin mapping class group, and goes to pi zero of the space of homotopy automorphisms of R plus M. And the result says this, it's a group homomorphism, because homotopy automorphisms, let's say, that pi zero of it is a group. And it factors through the abelianization of the of this mapping class group. Yeah, if you take a commutator of two of two diffeomorphisms, then it acts trivially. And it's this is remarkable because the, this group this is a this is a highly non-abelian group. We, we know a lot about it. We know we know that it's an arithmetic group by by a theorem of Dennis Sullivan, but it's complicated. It's big. And this one is completely mysterious. So we don't know the homotopy type of R plus M. And even if we knew the homotopy type, we don't know what the group of homotopy classes of homotopy self equivalents should be. So it's a completely mysterious object. But this homomorphism, it factors uh, through an abelian group. And this abelian group is often, is often small. Yeah, so for one, one example that played a role in our work was you, you take you take S3 cross S, S3, and then you take the connected sum of many copies of it. And if you take enough connected, enough copies, then uh, it turns out that this abelianization of the spin mapping class group is actually the trivial group. So it tells you for this, for this manifold M, whatever diffeomorphism you take, whatever spin diffeomorphism you take, the, the pullback map on R plus M is uh, homotopic to the identity. So that's, that's the phenomenon. That's something we discovered. It was, it was on the way of the proof of the theorem that 
this index difference map is subjective. This index difference map to KO theory is subjective. So now, if you know it's an abelian group, you if it factors through an abelian group, you ask what abelian group could it be? And uh, they have the following construction. You take if you if you have a if you have a diffeomorphism of a closed manifold, you look at a cylinder, and you can glue the two ends of the cylinder using this diffeomorphism f, and then you get then you get a, a manifold of one dimension higher the mapping torus. And if you take a spin diffeomorphism, this mapping torus has a spin structure, and uh, you can look at the spin cobordism class of this mapping torus. So then we get a map from from the spin mapping class group to the spin bordism group in one dimension higher, and it's, it turns out to be a group homomorphism. And of course, the spin cobordism group, that's an abelian group. So that's a candidate, that's a candidate, and it, indeed it turned, turned out to be true. That uh, was a PhD thesis by Georg Frank. The main result is so in this, uh, for under these hypotheses, you have a spin manifold simply connected and of, dim of dimension at least six. Then this action map factors through the spin cobordism group via the mapping tools. So this says you take a simply connected spin manifold, you take a spin diffeomorphism. And if the mapping tools of the spin diffeomorphism is null bordened, then the pullback map on R plus M. Is homotopic to the identity. So that's uh, that was Georg theorem. And he has more general versions which work for arbitrary manifolds, but then you have to and you have to closely look at tangential structures. And I don't want to talk about it right now. Yeah, so that's a, just a special case. So you have a he has a general, more general theorem, uh, which works for all closed manifolds. So while you uh, Maybe, let me say in a couple of words how he did it. So you, you have seen in you have seen in Bernard's talk that if if you have a spin cobordism between two simply connected spin manifolds, then you you have to make that spin cobordism simply connected, and then you pick a suitable handle body decomposition, and this tells you how to obtain the M one from M zero by a sequence of surgeries high dimension in high co-dimension and in each step you get you get a homotopy equivalence from one manifold to the r plus on one manifold to r plus on the next one and the next one and the next one and the next one and what georg did was to look very closely at this and to find out that the homotopy class of this map does not really depend on the choice of the antibody decomposition that was previously done by mark walsh but then he also went one step further, and it was that this map really depends on the cobordism class, on the cobordism. It really only depends on the cobordism class of the cobordism. And if you know that, then it's not so far to get it to the theorem. Um, so it has an interesting special case. The interesting special case are manifolds where you have all all rational Pontryagin classes zero. For example, you could take a stably parallelizable manifold. And then you look in the old literature on uh, on cobordism groups and you find a theorem that the uh, for such manifolds, the mapping tools of any spin diffeomorphism has finite order in the spin bordism group. Not, not too hard to prove. It has to do with the multiplicativity of the signature. And but as a conclusion, you get for such manifolds, for, for a manifold with trivial rational Pontryagin classes, for any spin diffeomorphism, the action map on R plus M does have finite order. Some power is uh, acts trivially. Yeah, so you see, you see for for those manifolds, uh, yeah, it's very difficult to. Uh, to get from diffeomorphisms maps on R plus M, which are not trivial. Um, so then we have, and this is maybe the, the, the main new result I want to talk about is uh, we have a generalization 
of the of the arc theorem to higher homotopy groups. So this was this was about pi zero of the spin of the spin diffeomorphism group and uh, pi zero of the space of homotopy self equivalences. And we could ask what what about higher homotopy groups? And then we have the following result. Um, we, we need we need some we need some technical adjustments. So we 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 couldn't get it done for simply connected manifolds. We had to require that the manifolds are two connected. So pi two is also zero. Uh, we have the same dimension bound d at least six, and we could not talk about the whole spin diffeomorphism group. We have to talk about those which fix a certain disk. So you fix it. You, you take a disk inside M. And you look at those uh, diffeomorphisms, which are the identity on that disk. So you still have you still have a map like this, um, and what we found out it factors through a certain abelian group, which I call, or which is pi k plus one of empty spin d. And I want to explain what what this is. What is pi k plus one empty spin d? So that's um, if you if you know a little bit about cobordism theory, you know that Tom identified the cobordism groups with the homotopy groups of a certain spectrum, a, a, a and the, a type of spectrum which is nowadays known as a Tom spectrum, and MT spin D is a certain Tom spectrum, which was introduced in this, this specific version of spectra was in, introduced by Mats and Tillmann. And the the homotopy groups of a of a Tom spectrum have a, always always have an interpretation in terms of cobordism groups, and then what the right interpretation is depends on the spectrum. And here it's as follows: so it is um, you take manifolds of dimension d plus k plus one, which are closed. You take a vector bundle of rank d on the manifold. And you as and you fix an isomorphism of this vector bundle V or a stable isomorphism of this vector bundle V with the tangent bundle T n. But it's not an isomorphism of vector bundle. It's only uh, if you stabilize if you add sufficiently many <laughs> R n. And I've wrote R infinity to be to be a bit more awake. Yeah, so that's 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 a type of cobordism group. And then what is a cobordism? Yeah, sure. It's a it's a cobordism of manifolds, k plus d plus two manifold. And on this cobordism you have a vector bundle also of rank D, which restricts to the given vector bundles on the two ends, and then you have an isomorphism of the same sort of what I said. So that's that's an abelian group. And we claim and I didn't write our names here to the theorem. That, oh, sorry. That's a theorem by, by Oscar Randa Williams and myself, proven in 2019. Um, so that's a that's a, that's a new theorem I want to want to talk about. Um, so how do we how do we let me let me explain the map A. So you you take um, we, we take an element in uh, in the homotopy of the Diffeomorphism group, and what can we do with that? So an, an element in pi k of the diffeomorphism group that gives me a fiber bundle over a sphere of one dimension higher. Yeah, the, the dimension of the sphere is one higher than the degree of the homotopy group with fiber m. So what you do is you, you take two copies of dk plus one times m and you glue it together along these maps from the element x and uh, this manifold n has a spin structure and it has a vertical tangent bundle yeah uh, you, you, you have the, that's the kernel of the differential of pi that's a vector bundle of rank d dimension of n and then you see you exactly get an element in this uh, in this group pi k plus one of mt spin d exactly in the description here so this map a generalizes the mapping torus construction to higher homotopy groups of the diffeomorphism group and that explains the uh, that explains the theorem yeah that explains the map a 
And this map A is not at all an isomorphism. Yeah, it can be often be quite prevalent. Um, so we can, there's one thing, um, if you look at this homotopy group, you, you, you see the, 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 the manifolds in, in this cobordism description, you have K plus D plus one dimensional spin manifolds, and you just forget that the tangent bundle has a specific form, and by this you get a you get a map to the spin cobordism group. And if k is zero, um, then the composition you first apply i a and then this forgetful map you get the mapping towards construction. So this says that for k equals zero, uh, we get a result which is quite close to Georg's theorem, but not quite. This this obvious map is not an isomorphism. If it were an isomorphism, we could just recover. Uh, Georg's result, but this is a little bit weaker. And um, yeah, then I already mentioned we had these strange, uh, these strange conditions that uh, the manifold is too connected. We would like to get rid of it, but we don't know how to do it. And also, we don't know how to do it, um, how to do it for the whole diffeomorphism group, and not just not just those fixing a disk. But this is, I believe. Uh, can be done, but not with our proof. Um, it has a consequence. Yeah, like homotopy groups of spectra, okay, homotopy groups are, are diff difficult to compute, but what is always fairly easy to compute are rationalized homotopy groups. And in this case, you can you can uh, compute them in terms of characteristic classes like Montrealian uh, classes and, and Euler classes. And they are finitely generated abelian groups. So it's not, not so hard to calculate. And one can prove that if the manifold is doesn't have Pontryagin classes, then this map A is rationally zero. So that's, again, that's very similar to the theorem that the mapping torus of any diffeomorphism of a stably parallelizable manifold as finite order in the cobordism group. That's very similar. And one manifold where all rational Pontryagin classes are zero are the spheres. And in this way, you get, we get back the result by Botvinnik and Anke and Walsh and Schick. So that's uh, the corollary. If, if the manifold doesn't have, uh, doesn't have any non-trivial rational Pontryagin class, then this orbit map has actually finite image. Even through the pi k of the of this diffeomorphism group, that's that's just unknown. I think the only structural thing we know here is a theorem by by Alexander Coopers that these are finitely generated groups. That's a billion groups if k is at least one. So there's almost nothing is known, and about pi k of r plus m, we also don't know much. We know this orbit map has finite image, which I find quite quite stri striking and strange. So I um, so I would so when I when I planned this talk for the, I thought I could explain the the proof of the theorem, uh, but I couldn't somehow. It was it's too long. But I want to I want to. Um, give you an impression how such results so the all these results are like of the sort the action the action of the diffeomorphism group on the space r plus m is fairly trivial i just want to say you have 30 more minutes yes okay <laughs> yes yes okay just to reassure you yes okay yes i still have seven slides but i want so i want to go into a proof now and but I don't want to go into the proof of the new result. I want to go into the proof of the abelian theorem because there you see it, it, it will be fairly explicit. And there you see exactly how the Gromov loss and surgery theorem comes into play and, uh, and works behind the proofs of both theorems. This is why I picked this abelian theorem as an example. And um, so let's go through it. So, what's the setup? The setup is we have a simply connected spin manifold and it's spin null bordered. 
and high dimensional and we have two spin diffeomorphisms and i want to show that the pullback maps of those two commute up to homotopy um so what we do okay let's let's uh so in this m we, we, we find two disks so you remove the two disks and we get a cobordism from the sphere to the sphere well, let's call it let's call it w and if you if you take the union with the two disk you get back m so now there's a there's a, a, a an elementary theorem in, in differential topology so you if you if you have a diffeomorphism if an orientation preserve so if you have a, so look at a diffeomorphism of m and look what it does with one of those embedded disks and it gives you another embedded disk and if there's so you have two embedded disks in a connected manifold and a classical theorem an elementary theorem tells you these two disks are isotopic that's the so-called disk lemma and you can use this isotopy of disks you can use it you can extend it to an isotopy of the diffeomorphisms and that tells you after isotopy after applying an isotopy you can assume that f0 or that a spin diffeomorphism fixes this disk pointwise you can do it with one disk but then you can do it with another disk as well without it doesn't change it so we can we can assume we can assume that uh, that our two diffeomorphisms both fix two disks and then um you can remove the two disks and you get a diffeomorphism of w which is the identity on both ends now okay we have this surgery theorem now it makes its first appearance the first appearance is in this uh in r plus m it's homotopy equivalent to a subspace and it's homotopy equivalent to the subspace of metrics which on both of those two disks are equal to the so-called torpedo metric so that's torpedo it's a rotationally symmetric metric that's the type of metric which shows up in the surgery theorem by the way i i avoided that word and yes. this and therefore i introduced the half spheres yes but then you then you come into trouble with the boundary condition so not I, with not with not using my theorem with christian i think that's okay but yes, anyway. yes 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 i mean the theorem is so surely out of what you formulated you can you can deduce what i use here yes i mean it's the same theorem in, in slightly different variants yeah it's a variant of that so it is it, it tells you the yeah the space of metrics which are on each of those disks are a uh, torpedo matrix that's homotopy equivalent to the whole of r plus n and then of course if the if the metrics are of a standard form on these two disks you can cut out these two disks and you see that the space of metrics on the cobordism w which on the two ends are g0 where g0 is uh, the the wrong metric the d minus one sphere so uh by these two steps so i i, I firstly achieved that this the, the spin diffeomorphism fix the disks and the the metrics are of a standard form on these two disks this means i can restrict two manifolds with boundary yeah and then let's look at w instead of m so that was the first step so we i introduced two holes and you see now how how i use these two uh, these two holes so uh let's shorten notation c means the cylinder on the d minus one sphere and m is uh, the round metric plus the uh, metric the the usual metric in the in the interval coordinate let me write it n to be shorter now one one assumption was that this this manifold m is bordered to is null bordered spin null bordered and then it's also spin uh, spin bordered to a d sphere and then you see okay then um you can play a bit around and what you see is you get this w which is m minus two disks you get from a cylinder by surgeries in the interior of the cylinder yeah, because that m is cobordered to 
SD means you can obtain M from surgeries on starting from SD and you can obtain it by surgeries from that. And uh, a little re refinement of that would be you obtain W from a cylinder by surgeries. <laughs> now I use the surgery theorem for a second time. And it tells me, okay, uh, the space of matrix on the cylinder subject to the boundary condition that you have the round metric on both ends. That's the same as the space of matrix on W with the same boundary condition. And the, the, the theorem says there is a homotopy equivalence. You should not try to, you should not try to think there is a map of spaces which takes one point in the space as an argument and, and, and spits out a point here. So it's just a map, it's, it's only defined up to homotopy, but what always what you can always do is it gives you a well-defined bijection on pi zero components. And this is what I do. Yeah, I take I take a metric H0 on this on this R plus W, which corresponds to the cylinder metric on R plus C under this homotopy equivalence that I just displayed. So that's a metric H naught. Uh, that we that I constructed on R plus N. Now this has an important property. Yeah, what 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 property does it have? It's what what we call right stable and left stable. So let me explain what these words mean. So you could uh, so if you have a metric on a cobordism, this makes sense in, in, in full generality, but let me, I, I only wrote it for in this situation here. So if you have a metric on a cobordism W, you can look at any other, any cobordism V, which goes from one end of W to some other manifold. And then I can talk about a PSC metric on the other end, call it G1, an arbitrary PSC metric on this other end of V, and I get a gluing map from metrics on V to metrics on W union V. And it just takes a union of H with H naught. And the property that this map has is that it's a homotopy equivalence. This, this just follows from the surgery theorem in, in, in a couple of lines. So it's a homotopy equivalence. This is a property that we call right stable. Yeah, so right, why is it right stable? So we had to, we have to distinguish these two sides. So the metric on W is so that whenever you glue a cobordism B on the right end of the cobordism, then you get a homotopy equivalence of this sort. So uh, in this situation, uh, you can also play the game with the other end, and it, it has the same property that's called left stable. So if you glue at the other end, it's left stable. Um, so another metric which is both left and right stable is that uh, it is the metric and the, the, the cylinder metric. Mm -hmm. um, by the way, this notion is, we developed this notion in this paper and, and, and we proved later two versions of the surgery theorem, which I just tell you. It's, if, you if you have a cobordism um, from one end, M0 to M1, and if the inclusion from M1 into the cobordism is too connected, to connect it means you have an I, you have bijections on pi zero and pi one, and you have a surjective map on pi two, and then you can on on the you can prescribe a PSC metric on one end of the cobordism, and then you get from the theorem you get a PSC metric on the other end and a right stable metric in between. That's one theorem, and the other theorem is if both if the inclusions of both boundaries are too connected, then the notion then then right stable is equivalent to being left stable. So, but that was was only an aside. So we have uh, so I, I constructed this matrix H not, and I, I found out it has this property: it's right stable and it's also left stable. So let's go let's go on. Um, this now now I can now I, I can look at a spin diffeomorphism F naught, and I can pull back uh, the metric H naught with F naught, and I, I take the union with the round metric, 
And because this H naught is left stable, I can I, I find out that this metric is in the same path component of the space of PSC metrics as a metric MF naught union H zero. And MF naught is a certain metric that I just constructed. Yeah, so that's that's uh, that's what we get from H naught being left stable. And now I do what any topologist likes. I make a diagram trace. Yeah, I have um, I have W and I glue cylinders to both ends. So here I have uh, here I glue the, uh, C to the right hand to the right end, and here as well, and here as well. And I use the metric M, the cylinder metric, to do it. Here I have the uh, pullback with F naught. Here I have also the pullback with F naught, but I extend F naught over the cylinder. This is the square is commutative. And here I glue this M naught from the left side. This is also a commutative diagram. And here I glue the H naught. And um, all maps are homotopy equivalences. Yeah, so that's that's clearly a commutative diagram, and I want to find out something about this map f f naught star. But now, you look at this diagram and you compute the this the, the right hand column. Yeah, what does what does the right hand column do? And the right hand composition, what it does is, I take a metric on a cylinder, I glue on h naught, I threw it over the manifold with F naught and I glue on this M. But now that's going to be the same as uh, taking the union with M and the union with F naught star H naught. And because this metric here is in the same path component as this metric, I see that the two maps are homotopic. Yeah, so the, that means the, the, the right hand column is the same as taking the union with H naught and then taking the union with MF naught. But now these maps are all homotopy equivalences, and then you see this map F naught star is essentially the same as taking the union with MF naught on the right hand side. That's what I, what, I, what I get from this argument. So here's the conclusion. So if I first apply F naught star, and then I glue on this cylindrical metric M, this is homotopic to the map that I obtained by gluing on this metric M F naught to the to one side of the cobalt. But now I want to talk about two diffeomorphisms, and I, the other one is F one, and I play exactly the same game, but I use the other end. So it says F naught star is given by taking the union with MF naught from the left, and F1 star is given by taking the union with MF1 from the right. But if you take the union from the left or from the right, it really doesn't matter which in which order you do it. And this shows that the two maps are commute up to homotopy. So that's a proof of this of this abelian math theorem. So you see, I presented it because. It really shows you how the surgery theorem can be used to manipulate the action of of the diffeomorphism group and to obtain and to obtain interesting results. Um, Johannes, may I ask something? So, um, so my intuition is that, of course, if you apply these two diffeomorphisms one after the other, each of those affects basically the whole manifold, more or less. Yes. And so if you pull back the metrics, it's completely unclear why this these two actions should commute up to homotopy. But why is it possible? So is there a kind of a rule of thumb explanation or giving an intuition why it's possible to still separate the kind of the, the, the regions where the positive scalar curvature is affected by the... I mean, that's a surgery theorem. In a sense, it's a surgery. I mean, the, the real intuition is, is it, it, what, what really happens is here, this step, yeah? This H naught is right stable. So you see all of the topology of R plus W 
I mean, W union C, it's just, it, it's essentially W, yeah, it's diffeomorphic to W, but it tells you all of the topology of R plus W is somehow concentrated on this cylinder around the boundary, okay. which, is, which is not affected by F at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is this is really the intuition. The intuition is it's all the all the complicated topology of R plus M. It can all be compressed into little disks. That's the reason. But we don't get. I mean, we don't get that the action is trivial. We don't. This doesn't follow from that, and it's also it's not true. Yeah, the action is is non-trivial. One can concoct examples of manifolds where this where this is, is non-trivial. But it's somehow, this is the best you, the, the most you can trivialize it. So it commutes up to homotopy. So it factors through the abelianization. And maybe I should say, maybe I should say that, uh, I, I should say this explicitly, this map A, which goes from pi naught of the spin diffeomorphism group, to pi one of mt spin d, this map is some for some many for some even dimensional manifolds. For it, it is actually the same as the map that I mean, as the abelianization. Yeah, so that's really something one can show. Galicius Renderbeam really proved this. It's part of their big theorem. For some even dimensional manifolds, this map is actually the abelianization. But that's somehow we, we, you you can't make the you can't make the action completely trivial. But the fact that you can compress that you can compress all the non-trivial topology into disks makes it makes it uh, makes it possible to prove such a thing. You can't prove more, but this is exactly what you get. So we we can also then later we we we, we also showed it for manifolds with arbitrary fundamental groups. And then the role of the disk is then uh, played by uh, somehow the unions of all the two handles in, in a handle body decomposition and, and, and things like that. Is there very similar results there? Yeah, well, that's this is uh, this is the basic argument. The basic argument is such an such an Ekman Hilton trick. And it's very very similar to the to the classical Ekman Hilton argument, which proves that higher homotopy groups of spaces are commutative. And that's not, not very much not different. Um, I could also, um, no, maybe I shouldn't, maybe I shouldn't say this. No, no, that's not, that is not true. Okay, let's, let's go on. So you, you see, you see that the, that the surgery theorem really allows us to, to prove things about the diffeomorphism action, um, I want to let me let me also say that this is this is a key lemma in this work with Botvinnik and Randall Williams, because it allowed us to it allowed us to use knowledge about diffeomorphism groups to conclude finally things about R plus of 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 say a sphere. So it also tells you this. This is also a theorem which tells you that this action of uh, of the diffeomorphism group it's not just a random action of some topological group on some topological space. There's very distinctive, very 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 interesting and rigid features. So that's that's that's. Um, I found this very interesting when we, and I still find it mysterious. Um, so I, I, I promised to to talk about a little bit about the higher dimensional version for higher homotopy groups, and um, there we don't we don't do it in a way that we uh, that we look at homotopy groups. We look instead uh, at at a certain vibration. So that's a standard standard construction in algebraic topology. If you have some topological group which acts on a space X, you can form a fiber sequence. Uh, with um, the, uh, the base space is a classifying space, and the fiber is x, and the the total space that's the so-called homotopy quotient. Yeah, x. Yeah, it's e g crossover g with x. And uh, for such a fiber sequence, you get a long exact homotopy sequence, 
and it has a connecting homomorphism. The homotopy groups of BG are the homotopy groups of G shifted in degree by one. And then you apply the you apply the homomorphism and the map is exactly, I mean things are exactly done in such a way that the connecting homomorphism is exactly this orbit map. Yeah, that's that's, that's exactly true. So when you want to say something about the orbit map, it might be better to to say something about this fabrication and to see, for example, why is the connecting homomorphism of this fabrication trivial? Yeah, so the so the uh, the theorem that we actually prove makes a statement about this fabrication. So here we, we, we need to talk about the, the group F n. That's a horrible big group from a group theoretic perspective, but it has a nice geometric model. So it's uh, like, you know, what is BOD for the orthogonal group? It's this, big, you, you know, it's a Grassmann manifold. The Grassmann manifold is a space of all linear subspace of R infinity of, of the dimension D. And here, B diff n, that can really be modeled as a space of all submanifolds of R infinity, which happen to differ morphic to M with a, of course, yeah, yeah, needs to, yeah, you need a topology to make sense out of it. But that's a nice model. So you can really think about points of B diff n as some manifolds which are diffeomorphic to M, but not equal to M. And similarly, this homotopy quotient has a nice description like you you, you you take such a submanifold which is diffeomorphic to n and you take a PSC metric on it yeah that's the that's the uh, this homotopy quotient and that's also what one knows as a moduli space of PSC metrics it's very close to what Bernard calls the observer moduli space it's the only difference is I apply this usual trick. So usual, the usual trick here is the action of diff m on r plus m doesn't need to be free, but you make it free by introducing this extra eg, this contractible free g space, and then you get, and then you get this. So that's a moduli space very close to this observer moduli space. Now let's let's return to the situation where you have a general group acting on a general space, and you look at this fabrication that I just introduced. From the homotopy quotient to the classifying space. And now I suppose that I can induce this fibration from another fibration over some space Z. Yeah, suppose I have a fibration over some space Z and I want a commutative diagram which is homotopy Cartesian. And that's what does it mean? Homotopy Cartesian means the following. Uh, it means the following, if you, if you turn these maps, Q and P into vibrations, you can always, there's a standard way of doing this, then you get an induced map on the fibers from Q, fibers of Q to the fibers of P, and you want that this map is always a B homotopy equivalence. So that's the meaning of, of being homotopy Cartesian. It's the same as saying that the, that the fibration Q is induced from a fibration P over some space Z. So assume we have this, and then you then you look, yeah, make a little diagram trace, and what you see the action map, the action map is uh, from the homotopy of G. It's the same as the homotopy of BG, but shifted in degrees. You take the connecting homomorphism, and you make a little diagram trace. The fibers are the same. And you see that the, this connecting homomorphism factors over F. And that's exactly the theorem of the sort we want to prove. Yeah, that's, that's, exactly, that's exactly how we do it. So instead of looking at individual diffeomorphisms or individual homotopy classes of diff N, you look out for such a vibration over some space Z. And that's what we want to do. That's and um, you can play a similar game. So we have two versions, one for the orbit map, the other one goes to this, that looks more fancy, to the homotopy automorphism, but you can you get the same deck. Yeah, so they both of these maps factor through the homotopy groups of Z. And then what we do here, okay, we look at the action of, of uh, B diff M on R plus M, and um, we 
do such a diagram. Uh, so what are these spaces there? Uh, I explained the left-hand column. And the right-hand column is looks very scary. The infinite loop space of this spectrum. That's a very big thing. Um, its features are the homotopy groups of this in, loops infinity mt spin b are exactly the homotopy groups of the spectrum that I just talked about uh, half an hour ago or 20 minutes ago. And then there's a map alpha. And this really, so I, I, I should say, what are the hypotheses? The hypotheses are that w is one connected and spin, and the boundary is also simply connected. Under those hypotheses, you get, you get such a map alpha. And that's a very um, that's a very important map. Has been um, this was introduced by by Ibn Madsen and, and Michael Weiss twenty years ago, on, and Ulrike Tillmann. They did it. Yeah, the, these three people introduced these maps, and now it, there are many theorems saying when this map is it some sort of equivalence. It can't be a homotopy equivalence because the the right hand side is is a loop space and it has a billion fundamental group, whereas the left hand side, the, the fundamental group that's pi naught of B diff delta W, and that's, as I said, a big non abelian group. But sometimes, for some manifolds, it's known to be a homology equivalent in small degrees. And it's, I gave, give you one example where the statement is literally true. It's if you take the connected sum of many copies of S3 cross S3. You have, it seems that something is wrong with your microphone. I don't know. With the it's, microphone? Yeah, I mean, we can hear you, but it's sometimes sort of distorted. If, if he stays a little back, it's not distorted. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so. So this, okay, this, this maps alpha, these are really, these are really well studied. And, and have, have been well studied in the in the last 20 years. So it's not a random construction, not something we came up with, but it's um, it's some standard thing. It's like, it's like a if you if you know the comparison of cobordism groups with homotopy groups of the term spectrum, it, it comes via this so-called Pontryagin term construction, and it's exactly the same in a parameterized way. Yeah, and that's how these maps alpha come come into life. So then, an important thing here is that this infinite loop space is uh, the classifying space of the sp of the spin cobordism group category. So, what is the cobordism category? The topological category: objects are closed d minus one manifolds. Morphisms are d dimension d dimensional cobordisms. Both have spin structures. And then you take the classifying space, it's a general construction homotopy theory. And then Galatius, Madsen, Tillman, Weiss proved that the classifying, this classifying space is homotopy equivalent to loops infinity, I should say minus one to be, to be correct, uh, loops infinity minus one of MT spin D. So that's a, it's a, so this, this space here is, is a classifying space of the cobordism category of spin manifolds. And then the idea was, what is what is this mass cal x? It is uh, it is a classifying space of the cobordism category of manifolds equipped with matrix of positive scalar curvature. It's not exactly that; it's a variant. And uh, then we get a diagram, and then it's quite a bit of work to show that this is homotopy Cartesian. Um, there we need, there we need at uh, several places, we need the surgery theorem in a very essential way to do it. Um, so that's, that's how, how it goes there. It's really the use of the surgery theorem here is really hidden in the construction of X or rather in the proof that this is somewhat of a Um, but I think it's a good time to stop here. Uh, I hope that I convinced you that the surgery theorem can be used to prove powerful results about the diffeomorphism action. Okay, I, I think I'll stop here.